Welcome back. This is a series on Postgres SQL for MySQL DBAs. My name is Dave Stokes. I'm a technology evangelist for the Kona Corporation. And today we're talking about vacuum. Uh, MySQL DBAs might have heard some weird stories about vacuum, and I'd like to say that a couple of them are actually true. So why is this service this series actually? Well, uh, as a long time MySQL DBA, I've run into other MySQL DBAs who said they were interested in Postgres but didn't know where to start. So this is kind of a guided tour through some of the uh, bits of Postgres, uh, talking you through in earlier episodes how to set up Postgres, how to get it running, uh, how to create tables and create users, stuff like that. Now we're getting into some of the, the real meat and potatoes, as they say, of, of Postgres. And the thing you'll hear Postgres DBAs uh, talking to each other is about is vacuum. Now, this is a slightly ominous table maintenance procedure. Uh, no analog that MySQL DBAs run into on a regular basis with modern versions of MySQL. So what are we really talking about here? Are we actually talking about having to go to your, your server and run some sort of uh, Hoover-like device on the tables? Uh, not really. The uh, The vacuum command reclaims storage occupied by dead tuples. And what it does is um, as you change rows or um, delete them or do other actions on them where the original row is modified, uh, they become obsolete and they sit out there. And to get them removed from the table, even though they're not um, in current status, um, they need to be vacuumed out of there. And what happens is uh, vacuum needs to be run periodically, uh, especially on frequently updated tables. Now, a lot of this is uh, this is directly from the Postgres documentation. By the way, uh, dead tuples, what the heck is a dead tuple? Well, a tuple is Postgres's internal representation of a row in the table. So as you change a row, uh, in a table, you have multiple tuples out there. One's active. Uh, the older one that's been, the older version of it is inactive. So what we're going to cover in this episode today is why vacuum, using vacuum, and talk a little bit about auto vacuum. So let's go out there and create a mess so we have something to, to vacuum. So we're going to start real simple. We're going to create a table called foo. A uh, real simple table has two columns, one called ID, one called value. They're both integers. And then we're going to insert some values or a, a row or a tuple into our table. Now, let's change that. Um, we're going to take that one record we have where the ID equals one. And we're going to change the value from one to two, two to three, three to four. And if we look into the system tables, where we look into the PG stat all tables, uh, where our table name is foo, the table created up here, we'll find out that we have n dead tups or tuples. So that's one, two, and three. So the values are still out there in the table, but the current one is going to be the last one. These other ones out there, we can say they're obsolete and we no longer need them. So Using vacuum is real simple. We type in vacuum foo, the name of the table. And now if we go back there and check for the number of dead tuples, we'll find out it's been reduced to zero. Great, huh? Well, the logic behind vacuum is kind of interesting. It, like we mentioned earlier, we can recover disk space and reuse that disk space. We can also uh, update the data statistics. This is kind of analyzed table in the MySQL world, and there is an analyze command out there in Postgres as well. And it's going to update the visibility map, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, doing that really speeds up index-only scans. And also, it prevents against the ultimate nightmare for a lot of Postgres DBAs transaction wraparound. So what is a visibility map? Well, a visibility map, uh, for each table keeps track of which pages contain tuples that are known to be visible to all transactions. So that's the current row and anything that's being modified now in transaction. So the older stuff out there really isn't visible. It still might be out there taking up space, but it's not uh, in an active list. So 
Uh, vacuum can uh, take care of this, takes, well, this has two purposes. Vacuum can skip the older ones on the next run, so there's nothing to really clean up. It knows which ones are, are bad and doesn't have to worry about it. And it also allows the, the optimizer to uh, do index scans on some tables. So this is very, very, very fast. Now, something else that's different about Postgres is indexes don't contain tuple visibility information. So the indexes themselves can end up with uh, values that aren't exactly current. And um, a normal index scan fetches uh, a bunch of records and without checking to see if they're really the latest and greatest. An index only scan, on the other hand, checks the visibility map first. So we know we have the latest and greatest. Uh, this speeds up things appreciably. By the way, the visibility map is much smaller than all the data. So it usually can be cached even when the size of the data is very, very large. Now wrap around XIDs. Well, Postgres's multi-version concerns Concernancy control transaction semantics depend on the ability to have transaction IDs. Uh, consider this an accounting log to GTIDs and MySQL replication. So every transaction has its own ID. The caveat is, is that ID field is limited to 32 bytes. So if you run your database for a long time, uh, more than 4 billion transactions, uh, you can potentially have wraparound because it goes back to zero. And once that happens, transactions that were in the past appear to be in the future, which means your data is pretty much garbage. So to avoid this, uh, vacuum the table at least once every 2 billion transactions. I could hear a lot of Postgres DBAs in my, in my mind on a uh, Jedi-like notion of using the force and do it much more more often than that, but that is a good warning. Now, there's some caveats about uh, vacuum. Vacuum by itself, uh, without the full qualifier, reclaims the space and makes it available for reuse, kind of like NODB, where the the, uh, the table size doesn't actually shrink. Now, this form of command can operate in parallel and with uh, normal reading and writing of the table, as it doesn't grab an exclusive lock. Now, the space is not returned to the operating system and it's available for reuse in the same table, so like NODB table spaces. This also allows us to leverage multiple CPUs to process indexes, and this is a feature known as a parallel vacuum. Now, if you run a vacuum full, uh, it rewrites the entire contents of the table into a new disk file with no extra space. Uh, those of you who are used to old Windows machines that uh, used to run the file system optimizer to compact everything. Uh, it sounds kind of like that. Now, this form, doing it this way, the full is slower and requires an exclusive lock to keep it from getting messed up. Now, if you're a long-time MySQL DBA, this seems a little less than optimal. It seems kind of, ooh, I, I actually have to go out there and do that. Well, there's good news for you. There's something called auto vacuum, and automation can be your friend. Now, automatic, uh, auto vacuum goes out there and it's kind of um, the way to automate running the vacuum and analyze commands to update the table stats. How do you find out if it's on? Well, very simple, type show auto vacuum and it'll tell you whether it's on or off. Now, normally in the series, I do video demos and unfortunately this is the second one in a row where I don't really have enough material to demo. I can't really go out there and show you auto vacuum or vacuum working other than what I showed you so far. But uh, stay tuned, we're gonna go back to live demos very quickly. And with that, um, let me know what you want to see on the next presentation. Uh, give me your feedback through YouTube. I'll leave it under the comments for uh, this video or send me a message on Twitter at Stoker. And with that, thank you for watching and I'll have the next episode out ASAP.